Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savelle. God can be depended upon. God is reliable. God can be trusted. And he says, notice I'm not reading from 1 Jerry, I'm reading from Psalm 34. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And so he says, he delivers them out of them all. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Job, chapter 42. And uh, there's some other scripture I want to mention to you before we actually read chapter 42. But a few comments I want to make in preparation for what I want to share with you. There's four specific things that the Holy Spirit has impressed upon me coming into 2021. The first thing he said to me was it would be a year of abundant overflow. I'd like for you to write these things down if you have the opportunity. Write them down, take them home with you, pray over them, meditate on them, and expect them to take place in your life. Number one, a year of abundant overflow. Number two, a year of an unprecedented outpouring of the goodness of God. An unprecedented outpouring of the goodness of God. Number three, a year of first things that have never happened to you quite this way before. A year of first. And then just recently, I heard him say a year of restoration, recovery, and recompense. God will make your adversary pay for what he has put you through. I think you ought to go ahead and give the Lord a good shout over that, praise God. A year of restoration, recovery, and recompense. Now, I actually heard it just like this, and I'm going to read it to you because I don't want to overlook anything here. And this came just a few days ago. As I declared in days of old, I am declaring again to you in your day, restoration, recovery, and recompense is coming. Look for it, expect it, and receive it. And then sometime later that day, I heard him say this, there will be no less than double coming to you, for I am the God who restores, and when I restore, I never bring back to original, I make better, I increase, and I improve. So again, I say, look for it, expect it, and receive it. And then I looked up some verses where this is verified. In Ezekiel 36, 11, God says, I will do better unto you than at your beginning, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Another translation says it this way. I will make you prosper more than before. And then Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12 says, Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will render double unto thee. The message translation says, Everything you lost will return twice over. And then I wrote these words, Things are turning for God's people. Breakthroughs, particularly in the financial realm, are being released from heaven. Get ready, some good things are going to happen quickly. More and more frequently are you going to experience miraculous things, unusual things, and extraordinary things taking place where your finances are concerned. I'll say it again, financial breakthroughs are being released from heaven. Somebody shout, I receive them, praise God. And then finally, I heard him say, as the prophet Haggai declared by the word of the Lord in his generation, I declare again to your generation, from this day on, I will bless you. Yes, I will bless, bless, and bless. 
So I want you to lift your hands and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. And then finally, I wrote as just a footnote, history is repeating itself. History is repeating itself. Back uh, at the beginning of the year, when the Lord first began to speak to me about these things, I preached it in our church here in the Fort Worth area uh, for several weeks. And then I began to travel and I preached it everywhere I went. I've continued to do so every place I've gone. And of course, the more I preach on it, the bigger it gets. Revelation just keeps coming. And then eventually we, we uh, put all of this in a book, which just got released this past week. And it's called Live in God's Abundant Overflow. And the last chapter of that book, I, I put those words, history is about to repeat itself. God restored the children of Israel. God restored Job. And if you remember, he didn't just bring him back to original. He gave him twice what had been taken from him. You know, before going into the ministry, and many of you know this, you've heard me say it before, I owned an automotive business. I repaired wrecked cars. I restored classic automobiles. My dad and I built hot rods and race cars. People would bring to my shop, if I wasn't doing just paint and body work, they would bring to my shop classic cars. And usually what they wanted me to do was to restore it. And they would bring their cars on trailers and sometimes in pieces, most of the time in pieces, in boxes, and uh, half of it was missing and they wanted me to bring it back to original. Now that was my definition of restoration. If you say, Jerry, I want you to bring this car back to original. I want you to restore it. Then that's exactly what I did. I didn't put a bigger engine in it. I didn't change the transmission. I put it back original. If it was something that Henry Ford built, I tried to build it or rebuild it just exactly the way Henry did in 1929. That was Jerry Savelle paint and body shop definition of restore. After I came to the Lord, I found out God was in the restoration business too. But he didn't bring back to original. He improves. He makes better. He increases. He multiplies. Hallelujah. He makes it. Let me say it this way. He makes the devil wish he had an attack you to start with. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I remember years ago, in fact, 40 years ago, this year, 40 years ago, uh, I was having a board meeting and many of our board members had spent the uh, night with us in our home. Uh, we couldn't house them all, so some were in hotels, but they all came to our house one evening and uh, the last night of our meeting, and we just had a time of fellowship. And then those that had to go back to the hotel went to the hotel. Those that were staying in our home went to bed. And I had to leave the next morning, and I was going to Tulsa because I was going to be teaching in the Rama Bible Training Center, Kenneth Hagin's Bible School. And so by the time everybody left, uh, it was, I don't know, after midnight before I had to go to bed, or, or got ready to go to bed. But I had to get up early to fly to Tulsa the next morning. And so I was tired. I mean, we've been in these meetings for a couple of days now, and uh, going over financial reports and all of this, and things we've accomplished, and things we were believing to do in the coming new year. I was tired. And the moment I laid my head on the pillow, I heard these words. If Satan can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. I said, I actually said, not now, Lord, I'm tired. <laughs> so I just closed my eyes and I heard it again. If Satan can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. I said, Lord, it's after midnight. I got to get up early in the morning. So I tried to ignore it again. And I heard it the third time. If Satan can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. I said, okay, I got up. And as I was getting out of bed, 
I awakened Carolyn. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to my study. She said, why? I said, the Lord said something to me and I, uh, I got to go pray it out and study it. And she said, don't you have to get up early in the morning and fly? And I said, yes, I do, but I, I got to do this. So I went to my study and I was there for a couple hours. And boy, when I got out of that study, I could hardly sleep that night because of the revelation that I received. And the next morning when I flew to Tulsa, I preached on it there at Ramah. And then uh, I began to preach it in several different places that I went. And eventually it became a book. If Satan can't steal you, joy can't keep you goods. That book has been reprinted I don't know how many times. It's still my best-selling book, and I wrote it in 1981, 40 years ago. I'm still getting testimonies from it. At one point, I almost wish I hadn't written that book because Satan was trying to steal my joy. <laughs> and uh, I remember, uh, and I've told this story before, but it's my sermon. I want to hear it again anyway. Uh, shortly after that had happened, this is still 1981, uh, we were doing the uh, East Coast Believers Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I've had the privilege in preaching with Brother Copeland in all the conventions that we've ever had. And uh, so uh, I called, there, there was a, a company here in Fort Worth that I bought my suits from. And uh, I wanted some new suits to preach in, in that meeting. Not only that, but I was going to be, be recording all of my messages for TV. I was about to launch into television. And so I had called uh, the gentleman that I bought the suits from, a company here that's been here in Fort Worth even before I moved here. And uh, I said, John, I need, I need some suits. Now he knew my size. He knew what I liked. And I, I really never had to even go in the store. I just say, I need some suits. And he'd pick them out. He'd pick out the shirts and the ties. He knew how to, you know, the size and everything. And, uh, and he would send them to me uh, or either send them back to my office and I'd pick them up when I got home. Or in this case, I said, send them to the Hilton Hotel in Charlotte, North Carolina and have them there by such and such a date. So when I got to my room in Charlotte, there was a box full of suits. So uh, I began to open the box and take the suits out, hung them up. And the next morning, uh, when I got ready to preach, I was gonna go in and put on a new suit. Well, when I put the slacks on, they altered them too short. They were too short, about this much too short. They came way up here like this. <laughs> And I'm, I'm taping for television. I can't go out there looking like this. Look like a country bumpkin. And I thought, well, maybe they just messed up one. So I tried on another pair. They cut every suit too short. I didn't bring any more suits. I sent them home knowing that I had these new suits. So what am I going to do now? And boy, Satan was trying to get my joy. <laughs> And the Lord said, you know better than this. Don't let it get your joy. I said, Lord, you're too late. It's already got my joy. <laughs> he said, you know if Satan can't keep your joy, if he can't steal your joy. Yeah. I said, I know, I wrote the book. <laughs> and about that time is when I was wishing I hadn't written the book because I have to live by these revelations. I can't just preach them, I gotta live them, you know? And I said, Lord, what am I going to do? He said, make it work. I said, how am I going to make it work? They're too short. I'm standing in front of the mirror and they're way up here. He said, pull the slacks down. <laughs> now the crotch is way down here and I'm walking like this. <laughs> but I managed to get my joy back, even though I'm preaching like this, you know. Nobody knew what was going on, you know. And as soon as I got out of that meeting and went back home, the next place I was to preach in was Miami, Florida. And I was down there, and after the service one night, 
there was a guy shouted at me in the parking lot. I was about to get in the car. Brother Jerry, Brother Jerry, don't leave yet. Don't leave just yet. Wait a minute. I'm going to drive my car around. I have something for you. So I stood there on the outside of the car and waited. And he pulled up and raised his trunk up. And he had 20 new suits that he'd bought for me. He said, and there's 20 more coming. I'm so glad I didn't let the devil get my joy. <laughs> God is a God of restoration. He doesn't, he doesn't restore and bring you back to your original condition. He makes better. He increases. He multiplies. And get ready, get ready, get ready, as T.D. Jakes would say. That's what's going to happen to you, praise God. You didn't allow yourself uh, to be robbed of your faith. You didn't allow yourself to be robbed of your joy. If you had, if you wouldn't have showed up here this week, you're here, you got faith, you got joy, and good things are about to happen to you. God is going to restore what the devil took. Give him a good shout in advance. Hallelujah. Amen. Taking back what the enemy has stolen is our God-given privilege. Amen. Not only that, but we are entitled to receive a minimum twice restoration. Minimum twice. Now, later in the week, I'll show you that you don't have to stop there. In fact, uh, the Lord's impressed upon me I haven't preached this sermon in years and years. I already mentioned that I wrote the book 40 years ago and the Lord impressed upon me that I was to preach that message again this year. I remember T.L. Osborne telling me a long, long time ago. He said, uh, it seems like uh, when God gives you a revelation, you may preach it a while and then it seems like uh, 20 years later, he'll bring it back yep. with some fresh, you know, fresh insight into it yeah. and have you preached yeah. it again. Absolutely. Well, some of you, praise God, perhaps need to hear just how powerful joy is. When you Come couple on. it together with your faith, it is an unbeatable team. Come on. Smile real big and say, I'm getting my joy back right now. Yeah. Smile bigger and look at somebody next to you and say, this is the way you look when you have a lot of joy. <laughs> Amen. So sometime this week, I'll be preaching on that, that message. So a minimum of twice what has been taken from you is what God will restore. Now, that's exactly what he did for Job. You've got the book of Job open to chapter 42. Do you know the story? Well, don't have time to go into all that, but you know what happened to Job. And then in chapter 42, verse 10, it says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, that's the God kind of restoration. Look at your neighbor and say, that's the God kind of restoration. Minimum twice fold. Minimum twice what you lost. And then if you'll notice, it goes on to say, uh, oh, look at verse, uh, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, verse, verse uh, 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. And then it lists there twice m m as much as what he had before the attacks came. So notice the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Hallelujah. That's what you got to look forward to. Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't over yet. The fat lady hadn't sung. <laughs> Amen. It's not over yet. You're headed for restoration. Twice fold minimum of what the devil has stolen from you. I've already experienced it uh, several times this year, but even in the last two weeks, 
I've experienced some twice-fold restoration, praise God. And God's no respecter of persons. If you'll just mix your faith with it, God will do the same for you. Can you say amen? amen? Look at your neighbor and say, you know, I'm probably next. So God not only restored Job's fortunes, but he also restated him in prosperity even greater than what he had experienced before the attacks came. Now, the psalmist tells us in Psalm 34, if you go there for a moment, Psalm 34. And let's look at verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now that's where religious people stop reading. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And I've even heard some of them say after they quote that, oh, and I'm afflicted. I'm scriptural. I'm afflicted. But it didn't say that. It didn't end there. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, everybody shout, but. But. I'm not an English scholar, but I did learn in school that but is a conjunction, and that means he's not through talking. Thou shalt not stop reading. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. If you haven't been delivered out of them all yet, then it's not over yet. Just hang in there, praise God. God can be depended upon. God is reliable. God can be trusted. And he says, notice I'm not reading from 1 Jerry, I'm reading from Psalm 34. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And so he says, he delivers them out of them all. Everybody say all. all. Now does all mean where you come from? What it means here in Texas, that means no exceptions. God will deliver you out of them all. The Passion Translation says, even when bad things happen to good and godly people, the Lord will save them and will not let them be defeated. Hallelujah. So when we choose to stay in faith, God always comes to our rescue. If we determine that we will not allow sorrow and depression to overtake us, then we will experience the hope of future blessedness. Go with me to Psalm 126. Psalm 126. And notice the first word in verse one is when, not if. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. Another translation says, the Amplified Bible says, it seemed so unreal. When God turned their captivity, it seemed so unreal. The message translation says, it seemed too good to be true. One moment they're in captivity and the next moment they're out. Amen. When God turned the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Notice it says, our mouth was filled with laughter. How will you act when God turns your captivity? Is that the best you can do? (laughs) Hallelujah. When God turns your captive, not if he does it, but when he does it. (laughs) Look at somebody and tell them, it's just a matter of time. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I learned a long, long time ago that one of the greatest expressions of real Bible faith is praise and thanksgiving in advance before you ever see anything happen. So let me try that again. When, when the Lord turns your captivity. When. Hallelujah. Well, I would have 
thought somebody would have run a little bit. I would have thought somebody would have shouted a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to bed one night worrying about how you're going to get this done and how you're going to pay for that and where's the money coming from and get up the next morning and God has turned your captivity. How would you act? How would you act? How do you maintain your joy in the middle of a trial? How can joy bring victory and restoration to your life? Today's special offer, the Joy and Restoration Package, contains Jerry Savelle's three-part CD series, Stability in Unstable Times. His best-selling book, If Satan Can't Steal Your Joy, He Can't Keep Your Goods, and his inspiring book, From Devastation to Restoration. In this package, Jerry teaches, how joy isn't connected to circumstances, why many people become discouraged, how to stand strong against adversity, and how God restores even when things look impossible. God is capable of turning the most impossible situation into a victory. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Joy and Restoration Special Package. Stop being an open target for Satan's attacks. God has called you to be a victor, not a victim. Order now and discover the joy and restoration God has for you. Thank you so very much for joining me today on Adventures in Faith. What a joy and an honor it is to share the Word of God with you, and I trust that your faith has been inspired today. You know, in the teaching that I've been sharing with you on this broadcast today, we've been talking about how important it is for us to never, never give up. Never stop applying your faith. Never give up on God because God is the God of restoration. He will restore. And also remember this, don't ever let the devil steal your joy. Amen. Let me remind you of our very special offer today. It's the joy and restoration package. And first of all, my book on if Satan can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. This book has been printed numerous times. It's gone around the world. And I know that once you get it in your hands and you begin to read it, it's going to change your life because that's the testimony we get from thousands of people all over the world. And then my book entitled From Devastation to Restoration. This is so powerful as well. God wants you to be restored. He wants to see to it that everything Satan has stolen from you its return, and much more. And then finally, this three-CD series, Stability in Unstable Times. What a fitting message it is for today. So if you'd like to order these, the ordering information is on your screen or go to jerrysavelle.org and uh, do it right away. Don't forget, don't delay. And I believe once you get them, it's going to be something that you're going to enjoy reading and listening to not only once, but several times. Thank you again for joining me. We'll see you again next week.